Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me today on Storytime 365. My name is Barbara and today I have a heartwarming Christmas story called Rudolph to the Rescue. This is a book that's been written by Robert L. May with pictures by Lisa Pat. Remember Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer's first exciting Christmas? Remember how his red shining nose showed Santa the way through the dark and foggy Christmas Eve sky? Well, when Santa and Rudolph finally finished leaving all the boys and girls their presents that night, they were both so tired that they went away for a long rest. Rudolph, of course, first asked his mother and daddy, if he could go. So that no one would be able to find them or bother them, they went as far from Santa's North Pole office as they could, way down to the South Pole. After a three-week rest, Santa took Rudolph back to his mother and daddy. Then Santa went back to his own North Pole office. He unlocked the front door and pushed, but the door hardly budged. Then he backed up, took a running start, and crashed his big round tummy against the door just as hard as he could. Santa bounced off like a big round rubber ball. The door moved a little this time, just enough for Santa to squeeze in. And there he found the whole room filled to the ceiling with letters the mailman had dropped through the mail slot while Santa had been away. Letters written by children to thank Santa for their presents. How will I ever be able to read them, cried Santa. With just one small lamp in my office and the North Pole night six months long, I'll ruin my eyes. If only Rudolph were here to help me and to light up the room with his shining red nose. There's an idea. I'll phone him. So Santa sent for Rudolph, who came right away sat down next to Santa and helped him open and read those piles and piles of letters. Suddenly Santa heard Rudolph was crying. Here, Santa, you read this letter before my tears make the words any wetter. Dear Santa, you didn't find us Christmas Eve because Daddy's circus moves to a different town every day, so our stockings were empty Christmas morning. We didn't get any presents at all. Please, Santa, try hard to find us next Christmas because Mother and Daddy say we've been very, very good. With love, Sonny and Sis. Then Rudolph said to Santa, we'll have to find out where their circus will be and the very best person to find them is me. So Rudolph traveled to the town where Sonny and Sis's letter had been mailed. Meeting some boys and girls, Rudolph asked if they knew where the circus was. That silly little circus? It left for the next town weeks ago. It only stayed here one day. Nobody went to see it. It was terrible. The same thing happened in the next town, and the next, and the next. And ten towns later, when Rudolph finally caught up with that silly little circus, he quickly understood why no town would let it stay for more than one day. The circus band, instead of playing the way circus bands should, played like this. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Clank, 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 clank. Boop, boop, toot. Bash, crash, bash, crash. Rrr, tingling, tingling, chinga, chinga, ching. Instead of lions and tigers that roared real loud, they had just one toothless old tiger who didn't scare anyone. And instead of shooting a man from a cannon, they shot a tiny mouse from a pop gun. No wonder no one buys tickets, Sonny said sadly to Rudolph. By next Christmas, Rudolph cried, sis, we don't know where we'll be, so you and Santa may not find us next Christmas either. 
you can easily see why Rudolph felt sadder than ever when he left Sonny and Sis and the circus and started his long trip back to the North Pole. That evening, while going through a dark forest and looking for a place to sleep, Rudolph heard noises he felt quite sure must be animals. When Rudolph got close enough to shine his red nose on them, he was surprised. The sound of an animal running very fast was a turtle, another walking very, very slowly, a rabbit. The barking came from a cat, the meows from a dog, the singing bird was a parrot, and the talking bird was a canary, and none of them looked very happy. Rudolph looked at the animals and said, you all look so sad and you all look so queer. Excuse me for staring, but why are you here? I'm the best talker here, the canary said to Rudolph, so I'll try to tell you why we're here. You can't really expect us to look happy. After all, each of us has been stared at and laughed at and teased ever since we were babies just because we're a little different from other animals we used to live with. Take me, when I couldn't learn to sing like the other canaries, no matter how hard I tried, but could only talk instead, the others all made fun of me. So when I grew up, I left them and flew away to a different forest, and here I am. Rudolph then learned from the canary how the parrot had come to the forest for almost the same reason. It had never learned to say, Polly wants a cracker, like the smarter parrots, but could only just sing. The dog that said meow had been teased and barked at by the rest of the dogs. Because the barking cat sounded just like a dog, she couldn't help frightening all the other cats who would run up the nearest tree when they heard her. The slow walking rabbit could never keep up with his fast moving friends. And whenever the fast running turtle tried to slow up to wait for the others, he would trip and land on his back. And you probably know how hard it is for an upside down turtle to get on his feet again. So each of these little animals had been sad and lonely, laughed at and teased. Even after they had all come together in the forest, they were still a little sad and a little lonesome. But at least they didn't tease or laugh at each other. After all, there was something a bit peculiar about each of them. As a matter of fact, the canary said to Rudolph, you're a little different from other reindeer too. Why don't you stay here with us? After all, isn't your nose a little bit er, a little er? Rudolph smiled and said, you can't hurt my feelings. My nose is a sight, but it sure helped old Santa that dark foggy night. I know how it feels to be teased just like you, but I've an idea. I know what I'll do to make each of you just as happy as me. So first I'll tell Santa, then boy, wait and see. Can you guess what Rudolph's wonderful idea was? Yes, by Christmas that year, the silly little circus had become the grandest in the whole wide world, all because of Rudolph's idea. Sonny and Sis's parents were happy because they had a circus everyone wanted to see. All the boys and girls were so happy to see this great circus that it wasn't able to leave the town for 10 whole months. Santa and Rudolph were happy too because they knew that this year they would have no trouble finding Sonny and Sis and filling their stockings all the way to the top. Sonny and Sis were happy because this year Santa brought them everything they asked for. In fact, he brought each of them an extra present because of having missed them the year before. And when it was all over, Santa said, Rudolph, you've made as many people happy on this, your second Christmas with me, as you did on your first. Rudolph felt very proud and he said, 
I hope you'll invite me to help you each year. The happiest moment allowed any deer is riding with you, sir, and guiding your sleigh. The number one job on the number one day and calling to all as we drive out of sight. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Thank you for joining me for today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like a copy of this book, please check below in the description for the link. Please remember to like and subscribe and I hope you'll come back tomorrow for another fun Christmas story.